What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. If you are here from my podcast, Popcorn Chats that I co-host with my friends, welcome. I know this has been a decently long time coming on there. Katie and I have been talking about Popcorn Chats. It's going to be launching our own YouTube channel. Katie already has one of her own, so I'll link her down in the description, so make sure you subscribe to her as well. And then I figured, why not start mine? Uh... We'll see where it goes. I read a lot of books and I like to talk about books, so I think that's what we're gonna be doing on here. For this first video, we're gonna be covering the Throne of Glass series, everyone. I read Akatar mm, a couple months ago, and after Akatar, I was like, I need more. What's the next logical step? I read Throne of Glass. So as you're gonna see in this video, it's actually gonna end up being two parts, mostly because as I was editing it, it was getting to be really, really long, so I think in this first part here, it's going to be covering Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, and Queen of Shadows, and then part two is going to have the remaining half of the books, and then my final thoughts on each book, my rankings of them all, because on the pod we like to rank things, so of course I'm going to rank these as well. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to start this. The series was just incredible, so I'm very excited to talk about it, so... Let's jump into things. So I am only on chapter eight currently. Um, initial thoughts, I don't like third person. Um, I think it's just cause I'm so out of reading third person cause pretty much all romance is told from first person. And like Akatar was told from first person, Red Queen is red person. Like pretty much everything that I've read within the last year has all been, sorry, first person. Have I been saying it wrong? This is third and I don't love that. Initial thoughts, I hate that the one character's name is Kale. You couldn't think of anything else. Kale, okay, interesting. Um, I like Selena so far, I think. I just think I have a harder time grasping like her personality. Granted, I'm only eight chapters in, which is only 51 pages. But when it's not in her head, I think it's just gonna take a little longer to get to know her. Early call right here. Um, but I'm here for Prince Dorian. I mean, kind of like a bit of an aloof prince with dark hair and blue eyes. You can't make me not like that character. <laughs> like that's, he's already going to be my call out for my early fave. I mean, look at Maven and Red Queen, trash human, but I'm still like, I'm going to keep going on this today and I will check back in whenever I have some more all right, I'm officially at the halfway point. Um, I'm on chapter 28, page 210. And um, I do agree that it does read a lot more like YA, but I've heard that then like starting at the third book on, it gets to be a little more like Akatar vibes where it's more like new adult, but like labeled as YA. So I still hate that that one guy's name is Kale. It's so stupid, <laughs> but I do kind of like him. Um, I love Dorian. I think the trials are a lot of fun. I like that, like, people keep on turning up dead. I think it's gonna make for a very fun, like, last half of the book. There are a lot of, like, open questions, I guess, that I have. One scene that was really weird was, like, in her dream where it was, like, the first queen telling her she needed to find the evil. I didn't really understand that, and I don't still really understand that. I don't think I'm supposed to yet because, obviously, they need, like, some more uh, mysteries out there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this tonight. I thought I would be able to, but I have 200 pages left and I think I might want to watch some dance moms or something stupid. Tonight's so we'll see. One thing I know, I can't compare it to A Court of Thorns and Roses because two completely different books, obviously, but one thing that I felt with Feyre was all of her actions felt very in line with who she was as a person and like everything that she said like felt very true to her character. And I kind of feel like Selena sometimes is kind of contradictory. I think it could be the third person. It could be just that, you know, I'm only like halfway through this book and I'm assuming she's gonna be like the main character throughout the rest of the series. So maybe we explore more of her personality, but I just feel like some of the things that she says or some of her like little mannerisms kind of contradict other things that she does or says. So, you know, but I do really like her a lot. I like kind of the three main people so far, so. I'm intrigued, except again, hate that this man's name is Kale. Kale. Really? Really? No, thank you. Did just finish Throwing a Glass. 
Um, overall, like, I think I'd give it, like, a 4 out of 5. I really liked it. Um, I like Selena. I'm, again, I knew it was too early. I was like, I know. It's Sarah J. Moss, and after Akatar, I don't trust relationships. So I was like, I think it's way too early to, sh to ship Sel Selena and Dorian. Or even Selena and Kale. I feel like it's still too early to ship her with either one of those. It's never going to work out with Dorian. It's never going to work out. There's literally no way. If they end up together, I will be legitimately shocked. Shocked. I still don't know how I quite feel about Nehemia. Nehemia. I, I like her now after I know like her involvement. She was sketching me out there for a while. But I think she might be a real one. So we'll see. I don't trust the king, obviously. I don't trust, like, I basically don't trust anyone. Uh, Duke Peringer, Peringer, whatever the fuck his name is. He sucks. He's absolute trash. And I think he's going to be horrible. Hey, the duel was pretty cool, like, at the end when she was, it's going to sound weird, when she was drugged, that was sick. <laughs> but when she was starting to hallucinate and, like, the magic was starting to come into play. Because that is one thing that I guess I was kind of surprised by in this book, that there's, like, no, none of that. I was just expecting with the fantasy that there would be, like, some powers in it, or, like, some people would have some powers. Um, and for that to not be really, like, a huge part of this, I'm assuming that it'll come later on in the series, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Knox, I liked him a lot, so I'm sad that he left, but also, like, glad that he didn't have to, like, get killed or something. So I'm calling it now. He's gonna pop back up in the next seven. He's got seven books to make his grand reappearance, but you know he's going to. You know he's gonna show back up. And Caltan's gonna show back up. She's gonna have some issues. I'll probably start the next one, which I believe is Crown of Midnight, I wanna say. I'll probably start that one tomorrow. I'm excited for the series. It definitely did read more like YA as some people have kind of pointed out than like Akatar does. I don't think Akatar reads like YA at all but this like does read a little bit more like YA and I still don't love the third person. Overall I'd say like four out of five stars. I just really like it and like I'm intrigued. I'm ready to know how this things go. So yeah. Um, I'm only on chapter six of Crown of Midnight so far and so far um i like it poor baby dorian i'm like i hate to break it to you buddy but like you guys are not gonna be end game and watch am i gonna sound stupid saying that but i can just feel it i'm like there's no way that they're gonna end up together i do not like this new character roland um we haven't gotten too much of him literally just like saw him in the garden but he seems creepy and I don't like creepy men, so he's one that I'm watching out for. I do kind of like that we might get to go on some like some more adventures outside of the castle with Selena, because one thing that I did get kind of bored with in Throne of Glass was like that the whole thing took place in the castle and like in that in Rifthold. So I think in this we might get to like go exploring a little bit more, which I think is going to be really fun. I am getting more used to the third person. I will say I was reading Vicious by LJ Shen this morning and that is in first person. And I feel like I read faster with first person. I don't know if that's a thing, um, but like I started and finished that book in one day where like these are just taking me a little bit longer to get through. But also I think it's because they're fantasy. So also I just, I read fantasy slower because I'm trying to like absorb it better. Where with romance you can kind of like zip through it a bit quicker. So yeah, I will update again when I have more thoughts. First of all, please just ignore my hair. I know it looks crazy. Um, okay. I've only, I'm only on chapter seven. So page 55 in Crown of Midnight. And I know, I know that they are like two completely separate series the only thing they have in common is that they are written by the same author. I can't help but like draw comparisons to how I felt about Akatar versus how I feel about this series. And Akatar was very slow for me to get into that first book. I'd say I didn't really start getting into it until like about 100 pages in, which was I think like chapter 8-ish. However, once I was like into it, I was into it. 
and by the end of the first book like I literally couldn't put it down I was so excited to start Mist and Fury I had to like go out the next day to Barnes and Noble to buy Mist and Fury and Wings and Ruin and I finished both those super quick now Throne of Glass I really enjoyed but was I like dying to start Crown of Midnight no and even now as I'm reading it like once again I'm like still kind of waiting to get into it and get to that point where I like don't want to put it down and I know that it's early on in the book but like for it being the second book in a series I feel like I should feel that way to be like rushing to like keep going and I'm just not obviously not going to stop the series I'm it, I don't care what it takes I will literally finish all my books I'm not at the point where I like don't want to keep going I'm just like missing that feeling of being like oh my god I can't put it down now hopefully it gets better or like I start enjoying it more but as of right now I'm just kind of like eh, I like it but I'm not like oh my god you know you know we'll see back with another crown of midnight update I am on chapter 12 right now and I just want to hop on here and say, one, I like Archer, I think. I think he could be kind of fun, but he could also have the potential to be really shady, so go and keep my eyes on him. I just talked to Selena about the, like, unrest that's kind of going on, and that he thinks that there's this one group that is being led by Aileen? Aline? Like, I don't know how to pronounce her name yet whatever all i want to say is why do all these characters have such similar sounding names and all the same letters like aileen so there's like aileen this new one and then because i'm assuming if she's a lost heir she's probably going to be coming into the picture in like a pretty big way and then there's elena and then there's selena and then nehemia gave selena like a nickname that is like Elaine it's something like a starting like Elena and I'm like why do all of you have the same names it's so confusing so that's like just kind of irritating me and it's still that this one dude's name is Kale I swear half of this video is just going to be me complaining about characters names and it is what it is I, I am liking it again as I said before I'm not like rushing to get back to it every single time I put it down I'm still kind of waiting for that feeling but I am liking it and I think now with Archer kind of in the picture a bit more it might get a little more fun so we'll see. I think there is some witchcraft going on over here well not really but I like was going back and forth like do we trust Nehemia do we not trust her how do we feel about her and I'm st and I was finally like, I think we can trust her. But now I'm back to being like, I don't know if we can trust her. So her and Dorian at this one ball, they were talking, looking over the garden at Kale and uh, Selena dancing. And Nehemia was like drawing symbols. And then she like drew one on Dorian. Not like in a suspicious way. Like he was not picking up on it. And at the end, she was like, when you like want to do something about your power, like come talk to me. And then walked away and then he was like I felt something deep inside me like opening an eye and like there there's been all this talk about eyes so I feel like she's a little sus again just don't do anything to Dorian must protect him my other quick note I'm again still not trying to get too attached to any like couples or anything then Kale and Selena as a couple I don't necessarily like I'm not super invested in. I more just like really enjoy their dynamic and their relationship and I hope that that's something that continues on. I really like when they're in scenes together. I think their banter is really good. I think they um, offset each other very well and they're just like very fun to read uh, their interactions between the two of them. So again I'm just waiting for like a little Akatar switcheroo with some couples so again not trying to get too attached. But I do just really enjoy their dynamic a lot and I hope that like that continues but we're only in book two of an eight book series so like I said not trying to get too attached. Finally, finally we are getting somewhere. We are getting some magic, we're getting some spice, we're getting some exciting stuff. So Dorian just like completely obliterated a wall by punching it. The debris is in like a perfect circle around him and oh my god like finally some magic is coming back i'm ready for the magic element of this book 
Um, I'm so ready for some shit to get like rolling and also I'm very interested now of where Dorian's gonna be headed because I really liked him in the first book and without him and Selena now being like a thing in this book I want more for Dorian so I'm very excited and I just feel like very invigorated this is where I'm like let's keep going let's keep reading well Nehemia just died so kind of shook I definitely thought that like someone was probably gonna die in this book and I wasn't going to be surprised if it was her I was just not thinking like halfway there was just so many like unanswered questions with her that I am very shocked I'm only halfway through this book chapter 30 like literally just a little over halfway through and the fact that she's dead now and I feel like there was so much left for her of her to be explored I'm just kind of shook by that but I love character death um I'm excited that someone died I know that sounds bad but I do really like character death in books and I think that it's very important that you do kill off characters as you go especially in fantasy dystopians that kind of genre I do really respect when authors kill their characters in a way that like makes the story more impactful so but I don't really get I guess the point of killing Nehemia yet um but yeah I am just like really surprised that she's dead so I'm excited to read more though this but like now I'm like finally getting into it and also the whole thing with like Dorian always being cold and like ice following him I'm very intrigued I'm very intrigued okay I'm like kind of living for this moment where Selena uh tracks grave down of her being like super calm and just like <laughs> stabbing him i know that sounds so weird but it kind of reminds me of, the, of like asriel from court of thorns and roses like his calm cool collected like getting answers out of people and like this is what i i've been like wanting this like badass assassin she's been built up as being like the best assassin ever and so far we haven't seen like a ton of that so seeing this i'm like there's a reason she got to where she was honey and i'm living i love it, it what does that say about me I don't really care. Okay, I have no idea how any of this is going to actually connect, but Selena just went down like the spiral in the library and um, found like the material that the rings that Kane and the King and Roland and Parrington are all wearing. She found that material down there and like her head has been hurting like ever since she started going down there. And I know Caltane has is like always saying how much her head hurts and then Dorian said that Roland has been having a lot of really bad headaches lately so that he's been like sitting out of stuff it's all got to be connected somehow I just don't get yet how any of it is connected obviously but Selena ended up at the clock tower at the end of the spiral which in the first book we saw Kane like drawing some symbols on the ground outside of there when her and Nehemia had walked by so definitely something's fishy <laughs> i don't know like all these little hints dropping but there's obviously like i don't know what it's all leading up to yet so i am excited and now kale's been looking into more of selena's history on like who she is and what her real name is which i'm like is she gonna be some like an heir probably but she's got to be someone important i'm assuming because isn't that just how it goes that's just what i would expect so We'll see. I'm too comfortable to get up to properly film this, but I I think I said earlier, I'm like, I like Archer. I want to like Archer, but I think he's shady. And turns out I was right. He's a shady little bitch. Oh, I just finished Crown of Midnight. I did not see it coming that she was Aelin. I didn't think that she came from nowhere, you know? I feel like just when you, like, read any sort of, like, a fantasy fairy tale, like, even like, take Star Wars, for example, like, no one's really just from, like, nowhere. I don't know. I just felt like there's no way that she's just this assassin from, like, nowhere and nothing important and, like, her family isn't important at all in the story. So I thought maybe when Aelin got introduced, I was like, okay, maybe that's, like, a long lost relative that she could like somehow connect with and she has like some sort of ties with to then like help aid her to the throne or whatever I don't know but I did not see it coming that she that Selena is Aelin 
even though their names are so similar and I'm pretty sure I said that in a video earlier. Oh my god, oh my god, okay. Wow, um, I'm very excited. I literally can't wait to start Air of Fire. I'm probably gonna start it tonight because why not? What I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to see more of Dorian and his magic. I can't wait to see what happens with that. Honestly, I don't really care about where Kale goes if Kale goes back to Anio. I really don't care at this point. Like, I only care about Kale if he's like with Selena, honestly. Where Dorian, I'm like really intrigued by his magic. I cannot wait for Selena to be out of Darlin and like off on an adventure especially now that like I know and like other people know that she's Aelin and by other people Kale so I think overall I ended up liking it better than the first book I'd still give it like four out of five stars because the beginning was still kind of dry for me I thought like I it took me until like about page 200 I think and then I was really like into it, it was like a kind of slow I guess in the beginning but I did really like it. Also, Archer is absolute scum. Yeah, I'd say overall, great. And I cannot wait for Air of Fire. Okay, so this is not great lighting, not a great angle, but I'm tired and I don't feel like sitting up or making much of an effort. So I'm literally only three chapters into Air of Fire so far, but we've met, or like we've seen Galen from afar which is like the prince of Wendlin. Rowan has just come, like uh, he's one of Maeve's guards, I guess, and has just come to take Selena to go and meet her, I guess. One of my friends that I've been talking to as I've been reading and she's been, I don't want to look anything up like at all because I don't want to risk being spoiled at all. And she just sent me a picture of Rowan and I hope we stand this man because he, he looks very attractive. I just, I love his tattoos. I have like literally none of him so far, but hopefully we stan him in the future because he's also Faye, which I think is super cool. I'm very excited for that, but who knows? I've literally only encountered him for a chapter, so can't say anything about that. And Galen as well. We've like, haven't really seen any of him. And Selene is just like in a really rough place right now, which it's like cis me too. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the deaths of people hanging on my shoulders personally, but like, I would also just want to drink wine and lay on top of a roof. So far, we've already met like th three new characters. So we've met Rowan uh, Manon, just met her, and she like ripped a bunch of guys' throats out. So like, that's really cool. Love to see that. I am interested like my interest is peaked on her and then Adian which is Selena slash Aelin's cousin I want to say so I kind of like it I think he's gonna be like uh an enemy but I kind of like him he's a little sassy uh he seems to be a little spunky a lot of flavor so I'm excited to see more of him even if he does end up like sucking I think he could be like kind of a fun a fun foe to have in the stories. So, air fire update. Um, I am on chapter 10, page 73. So far it's been a little slow, but that's kind of the theme, at least for me personally, so far with this series. I thought Throne of Glass started out kind of slow, and I also thought uh, Crown of Midnight started out slow. I like the introduction of some of the new characters. However, I feel like there is like a lot being written but there's like a not a lot not a lot going on so we've gotten introduced to Manon or Manon I thought it was pronounced Manon but it's Manon I think um Manon Blackbeak which I'm intrigued by her I think she's gonna be a fun character so I'm looking forward to getting more of her we've been introduced to Rowan who now I found out is a prince cool but he's kind of bland and I thought when he first came in I'm like oh maybe he'll be like Selena's love interest like end game love interest I don't I don't think so anymore at least not from what I've gotten so far um because they're related even like very distantly they're still related I think so unless this is gonna be like Game of Thrones and then two 
he punched her in the face. <laughs> like, I love enemies to lovers, but like he literally just punched her in the face. So I don't know about that. My only prediction is that Selena and Kale are still gonna be endgame. They're just gonna take like a couple of books apart and maybe they like meet up in like book five. They're both like doing their own journey and then they meet up later along the way. So again, early prediction. Dorian's just chilling in the castle with Adion. So yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Um, I like it, but again, I think it's kind of slow, so I'm just waiting for it to, like, pick up a bit. Now I'm on, like, page 211, and I'm way more into it already now than I was at Crown of Midnight at this point. I'm loving the scenes between Rowan and, uh, Rowan and Selena right now and her training. Rowan has been, like, a huge dick, and I, like, did not really like him until the Skinwalkers came out and, um, Selena, like, incinerated them with her fire. I was like, oh, bad. We always see it, and then when he was like just chopping them down, like, okay, we love that. So then I'm starting to think now. I was not thinking that her and that him and Selena would ever get together, but now I'm starting to think, are they going to? Is this a whole Reese situation where your first few interactions with Reese, you're like, this guy sucks, and then you're like, oh my god, this guy rocks by the end. So I'm like, is that how I'm gonna be with Rowan? I really like Dorian and Kale's storylines being back at the um, castle in Adarlan. Um, I like Kale is now starting to work with Adion, which I think is gonna be fun. I want more of Adion. I think he's really intriguing. Dorian Dorian is working with Sorsha right now, that healer, trying to like help him out a bit. Um, they're kind of cute, kind of fun. And then Manon, I don't, I like her. I'm very intrigued by her, but compared to Selena, Selena and Rowan's chapters and um, Dorian and Kale's chapters, Manon's chapters are boring to me. But I think that's just because it's so much world building right now with the witches that there's not as much happening. And obviously these other characters are ones that have been built up for two books already. So I am looking forward to getting more of her um, and see more in action. All right, let's see where we're at. I think I'm like about halfway, like halfway through the book. I'm getting vibes now. Like I'm pretty sure that Rowan and Selena are going to get together at some point. I'm getting that vibe and I get, I love the enemies. I love the enemies. I love that they hate each other. I love that they like are constantly like kind of at each other's throats however sometimes Rowan is just so fucking rude like I am really starting to like him but sometimes I'm just like dude you don't you don't have to go there Gavriel just came to like where they're all hanging out uh Rowan and him like went off they went up uh, off upstairs and Selena was like oh she kind of started to feel like, oh, I kind of miss, like, Rowan being around or, like, that he has a life outside of their training. So she's like, why don't I take his friend some food up to him? Like, nice gesture. And as soon as she gets up there, so Rowan's, like, tattooing Gabriel. And then Rowan basically just gets pissed at Selena for no reason except for just, like, coming up there. He basically just goes out to yell at her that she's, like, worthless. <laughs> and I'm just like, is that necessary? Is it necessary? <laughs> So I just that's all I have to say about him is sometimes he's just rude whatever um yeah Dorian and Sorsha finally kissed which I saw that coming we're gonna see where that takes them not think I was gonna do another check in tonight but I just gotta hop on here quick because I am now fully on team Rowan and Selena being together so Selena won like bitched him out over involving other people in her training and how that like is a big issue for her especially after Nahemia had like sacrificed herself for Selena and like all of her anger that she has still about that and all of her like deep-rooted emotions that she has regarding that and then she like burned the crap <laughs> out of his wrists and then she was feeling bad so she went to Rowan's room and they had that conversation and Rowan talked about um how he had left his mate alone to like go on this mission for Maeve to like search for glory for himself and how he was basically like didn't really like think about her and only was caring about herself and then when he left that his mate was killed oh, gut me oh my god but then when they when Selena kind of realizes that she's looking at like a reflection of herself and Rowan and that 
then they decide they can maybe try to pull each other out of the darkness together. Bitch. Kale who? Dorian who? No other man exists for Selena in my book. Like, they better end up together. I feel like they're going to, but, like, they just better now. Because I'm, like, fully on board, like, this train now. I don't care that he punched her in the face and is, like, rude as hell to her sometimes. Like, I'm, I'm, that's all out the window. That one scene, this, like, one scene has changed everything for me. I'm shook. Prediction time. Um, I'm... So we don't know who Adion's dad is at the moment that I'm at. So Rowan and Selena just had a conversation about siblings and how neither of them have siblings, but how Selena has a cousin, Adion. And kind of talking about that and like her parents and stuff. Here's my prediction. I think as of right now, so we don't know who Adion's dad is. I think that his dad is Selena's dad, which then that would mean that technically he would be the rightful heir right because he's older so like birth order he would like trump selena's claim but he was like a bastard technically right right okay i mean i could be completely off on this and i probably am because i was already wrong i think about the whole selena and rowan thing i was thinking like there's no way they're gonna get together and i'm pretty sure her and kale are gonna get together and now i'm fully like her and Rowan are end game. I'm living for their new tension. I love it. That's my prediction right now. And then, like, if he finds that out, would he try to, like, take down Selena? Because then she's, like, competition. While right now he's, like, trying to help her. And then him and Ren had had this conversation about... Ren was like, do you want to be king? And he kind of, like, danced around the question. But he was like, if my queen asked that of me, like, I wouldn't refuse. And Ren was even like, that's not an answer. So I think he does want to be king. And if this is true, if I'm right. Then he's technically the right heir. So the throne is his. But Selena would be in the way. That's my prediction right now. Um, I don't have anything else to say. I'll check back in later. Oh my god, this book is so good. So good. Like, I liked both of the first two, but this one is just... Uh, it's so good. I get why everyone was like, Air of Fire is one of their favorites. I totally get it. Um, most recently what just happened was the Val... The Valgs? The Valgs came and attacked Mist Ward and Selena went out and like basically they attacked her and like we went back through all of her memories and then she realized that she could be free of all of her fears and like burned them all and that her and Rowan are what is it called Karanam like the bond between the two of them I'm like I don't think I updated you guys on that but I was calling that I'm like I'm pretty sure they're gonna have that because they can't have the mating bond so I'm like I bet they're gonna have that kind of bond Mm, so fucking cool. Okay, wow, I look rough, but that's how I feel. I just finished Air of Fire. Holy shit, by far my favorite book so far. Like, literally, I feel like no comparison to the first two. Like, it was just so much better. Um, it reminded me much more of, like, the vibes of Akatar. Uh, a lot of, like, Mist and Fury, I guess, in terms of, like, the training and the relationship building between Rowan and, uh, Selena and Reese and Feyre. I loved the differing perspectives. At first, I didn't really like it. Um, still, I, like, was not- I liked Manon's chapters, but I did lose interest in hers in favor more of, like, Rowan and Selena's, but that's only because Manon's chapters are basically, like, the first two books. And Rowan and Selena's chapters were just like on another level. Same with Aidy and Cole and Kale. Jeez, I always say Cole. Will I get that right by the end of the series? Probably not. Can we just have a moment for sweet baby Dorian? I would sacrifice myself for this character. And I feel like the next book is going to be super rough for him. Like out of every character, like the next book is going to be so rough for him. That's my uh, first prediction for Queen of Shadows. I just feel so bad for him. First of all, seeing someone that you, I mean, 
like were they in love? I don't think so. But someone that you like really deeply care about so you get beheaded in front of you by your father and then your best friend trying to be killed. Mm -hmm. And then his magic is obviously exposed and then the king puts like that collar on him. So he's not going to be himself in the first book or er, in the next book. And that's going to be rough to see because we just love sweet little baby Dorian. I still like Kale. I'm interested to see where him and Ren go from here now with Adion and uh, now with Adion being uh, taken prisoner by the king. I'm really excited to see how that all plays out with the two of them. I am disappointed that at the end of the book it's set up that Selena and Rowan are going to be like separated in like two different places for Queen of Shadows at least what it's like setting up so far because I just loved their dynamic in this book. And I'm going to be really sad if they are, like, in completely different places in the start of, or, like, in this next one. Because I just want more of them together. But I'm so excited. Yeah, but Air of Fire, 5 out of 5 stars. Loved it. So good. And also, I love Rowan. We love it. I'm sorry. I look like a hot mess, but I am... I'm angry right now. Okay, I'm on page 59 of Queen of Shadows, and... Kale is pissing me off um and I really liked him so homeboy is like not doing it for me right now he basically is like blaming Aelin for everything that has happened to him which I'm like mm, not fair and he's like oh she pretty much does whatever she wants when she wants um like she probably just destroyed that like tavern because her anger got the better of her and she didn't even bother to wipe off the blood of her enemies from her before she talked to me but then on, like, the next page, he's talking to Nesrin and being like, oh, I watched her, like, slice through people no problem tonight. And he has no issue with this. Mmm. Someone's being a hypocrite. I, just, I don't like where his character is going right now. That, mmm, I don't like it. But it's, like, just how Aelin said, like, Selena is dead. Like, that person's gone. I'm Aelin. And he's, like, the captain is dead. I'm Kale now. So it's, like, you should understand. I mean, granted, now they are, like, obviously that changes people. And, like, time has changed people. But he's just being rude and so hypocritical. He's just making me very upset in these chapters. Yeah. He sucks. Right now. I'm hoping that, like, he gets over himself. But... Currently, we are not a fan of Kale over here. I'm now on chapter 25, and here are some rapid fire thoughts quick because I'm about to run to the grocery store. Aelin just rescued Adion. Bum. Love seeing them reunited. I'm excited to see what that duo can do. I do not trust Arabin. I like Lysandra, or Lysandra right now, Um, but we'll see. Not 100% sure on her. And Kale is pissing me off in this book. Like, I am not here for him. I'm just like, why are you so bitter? He's just being like a bitter Betty and I don't like it. Um, he's being a complete asshole to Aelin, constantly being like, oh, well, killing people isn't anything new for you. And oh, you love killing people. And I'm like, bro, did you not know what she was? That was the entire first two books was her being an assassin. And now he all of a sudden has a problem with it in this fourth one. And then I do, I do get where he's coming from, where he's like, I don't want you to kill Dorian because he's like always been best friends with Dorian that's who like he said is his one true king I get it and he's like I don't want to give up on him I wouldn't want to either buddy however the way that he like talks to Aelin about it is like ridiculous because I also got where she's coming from where she's like she knows she's seen what happens to these people and when the Volg, like, takes them over. So I totally get her point of view. Like, I kind of get both of theirs on this issue. But my problem with Kale is being such a hypocrite. And I'm like, how did you go from, like, loving her so much that you agreed to literally go back to your hometown with your father to then, like, take up your title again just to get her to safety? But then you found out that she was a queen with powers. That now you're like, mm, fuck her. Even though Dorian is a prince with powers kind of hypocritical um and then he said something I don't know towards the beginning of their interactions where he was like oh you're fae prince and I'm like once again you sent her there like buddy don't be angry then <laughs> like you set this all in motion I don't know he just is really really pissing me off so far but I'm loving it. This book is getting good. Again, I thought the first like 100 pages was slow, but now I'm really into it. So I'm going to go grocery shopping and hopefully then just get to like read the rest of the night because it is...
bomb and I can't wait to see what happens. I just wanted to say, I, I don't get where Kale's turn has come from. He just came over where Aelin and Adion have been staying and like recovering. And he's being a huge dick because the king just set like a market on fire. And he basically blamed it on Aelin saying that it was a message to her and that like she doesn't care about the city. Okay, rude. And then um, Adion and him were talking and Adion was like, we're not your enemies. Like, you can trust us. And he was like, not anymore. Like, what? What did they really do? Like, I know Aelin said that she wouldn't touch Dorian. And then, like, she got caught having the sword, like, raised up to, like, maybe kill him. Do I think she would have gone through with it? No. But, like, really? I'm like, is that the only thing that they've done to you? Like, I'm just confused. He's just being, like, such a jackass every time they talk. Like, I do get it that, like, he's gone through shit and, like, the stuff with Dorian is stressful, obviously. And he's worried about, like, the future of magic. How then, if that's unleashed, how, like, regular humans like him are going to be treated. But also, I'm like, but you have treated people with magic like shit for years. Or, like, the king has. And, like, you've just stood by and, like, worked for him. I don't know. I just have mixed feelings on him right now. Um, but overall, I just think he's being a giant jackass. Um, do I think he's inherently bad? No. I just think he's like not being a good person right now. So we will see. Ask and I shall receive. And I was like, I'm loving it so far. And I'm like, but you know what? I just, I miss Rowan. I, I mean, you guys probably all saw, I was not like the biggest fan of Rowan at the beginning of Air Fire. I thought he was rude. But now I'm like, I just miss him. And guess who showed up? So I'm living. I love have I love having him back. It was revealed then, obviously, that Aelin and him have the blood oath in front of Adion, which obviously pissed him off. But I'm really enjoying uh, that whole interaction that's going on right now. Uh, Caltane, girl's got some powers. So that like shadow fire very interested to see where that goes super happy that Rowan's back and I cannot wait to see his first interaction with Kale because Aelin told Rowan that Kale basically said that she was a monster and Rowan like mm, he got all like mm. and I can't wait I want Rowan to whoop Kale's ass like I'm not I mean I'm not a proponent of violence but, like, I wouldn't um, be angry if Rowan just, like, beat the shit out of Kale. <laughs> he has it coming. Uh, so, yeah, I'm living. And this book is just so fucking good. I just, I love it. Last night, I stopped reading right before the dinner scene with uh, Aelin and Arabin. Mostly because I knew that it would probably be long-ish and probably good and I was just getting sleepy and I'm living. I had a mini freak out thinking that Aelin was now going to be under like the control of the Wordstone rings. But homegirl thought of everything. Aelin is so smart. I never should have doubted her. Never should have doubted her. I hope she kills Arabin very slowly very slowly um i'm liking lysandra a lot i really hope that she doesn't turn out to be like shady uh, we love that rowan's back let's just hope she kills arabin very soon i officially finished part one of queen of shadows so now i'm on part two uh queen of light just very excited to see where this is all going i think there is going to be a lot of shit about to go down um in the second half of the book because something's gotta happen with Dorian. Arabin's kind of taken care of, but I feel like we're not done with all of the like assassin people in the city. The Vogs are still running rampant and I think Aelin's obviously gonna try to knock down the tower and free magic. So if this book ends with like magic getting freed, I think Empire of Storms is gonna be wild. I'm really into it. Aelin is such a badass. Literally cannot love reading her chapters anymore and that is something that I just want to talk about. I really like Manon and Elide. Like I like them both. I think that their chapters are interesting. However, I do just find myself like when I turn the page and realize that it's one of their chapters I am kind of like oh. I shouldn't say like oh. It's more just like oh okay. Like get through it. I'm so invested in what 
Aelin's doing back in Retold that it just kind of makes me like just want to get through Manon's chapters more quickly even though I know that obviously they are important so it's not like I'm taking them any less seriously or anything it's just like when I see Manon's name at the start of the chapter I'm kind of like or Elite's name I'm kind of like oh okay but when I see like Aelin or Kale or Rowan or something I'm like let's go or Adion I love Adion so much has happened so Kale had his like little redemption arc for me which awesome he like apologized to Aelin and like said basically that you know he knew now that Dorian was not in there anymore but then turns out he was but Manon and Aelin's fight was awesome um they shattered the castle shattered the tower so magic's back bless up our sweet baby Dorian is back um, him and Aelin joining forces with their powers was so cool. Lorcan came in clutch at the end, even though, like, he screwed him over in the first place for not killing him, but whatever. At least he came back to help. Caltane? Caltane. Real bitch. We love Caltane. Oh my god. She, she's so smart. She's so badass. All of the women in this book are literally so badass. Also, I forget, how could I forget about Lysandra coming in clutch? Coming in as a ghost leopard, is that what it was called? So cool. We love her. Oh, am I supposed to buy that like the king is all of a sudden a good person and that he was like possessed too? Because I don't buy it and I don't care that he's dead. Mm, bye. Poor Asterin. Oh my god. Feel so bad for her, but again, what a badass lady. And I'm just so happy that Dorian's free. Cause I love Dorian and I can't wait to see more of him. So, uh, I only have like, I don't know, 40 pages left. So I'm gonna go finish those, but I'm gonna go sit outside and then I will do like a final wrap up. But holy shit, this book is incredible. Incredible. I just need to say, I love Dorian and Aelin's friendship. And I know that they are like the most unlikely friends moving forward because they're going to be like, I don't know will they be enemies hopefully they'd be allies but I think just both of them being in such powerful positions like that's gonna cause some issues down the road or something but mm, I just I really love their friendship it's so cute so pure queen of shadows 10 on 10 5 out of 5 stars um I absolutely loved it I loved it it was so good I loved Dorian and Aelin joining powers at the end to take down the king and shatter the castle. Awesome. Loved Rowan and Adion. I loved that Adion like stepped in front of Rowan and was like prepared to die fighting for him. Oh, bye Arabin. Don't care about him. I love, I love that Aelin gave Lysandra her own land. I think that is awesome. I really like Lysandra. I have an early relationship prediction so I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think Lorcan and Lysandra question mark they had one little moment together and she threw up all over him but I'm like feeling the vibes <laughs> what else oh Kale is now um like his legs are broken ouch him and Nesrin are about to go somewhere to like try to heal him okay I'm excited to see where a lead goes because I'm assuming in Empire of Storms she's going to either find Aelin or like die but like somehow still get the message to Aelin I don't know. They're going to be have some interaction at some point. I don't really have too many predictions, I guess, for Empire of Storms, except I've just been warned that it's going to rip me to shreds, which I'm so excited for. I'm really liking the series a lot. I'd say that like Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows were both 10 out of 10. This is editing me right now. Uh, so I didn't have something for part two. So this was all part one. Thank you so much for watching. Please go and check out part two. Part two should be up now as well. So that's where I'm going to be talking about the last half of the books that I didn't get to cover in this video. And then also all of my final wrap up thoughts on each individual book, the characters, overall series. So yeah, please go and check that out as well. Mm -hmm.